in color. The continuing story of Peyton Place. Starring Ed Nelson as Michael Rossi. Ryan O'Neill as Rodney Harrington. Barbara Parkins as Betty Anderson. Christopher Connolly as Norman Harrington. Patricia Morrow as Rita Harrington. James Douglas as Stephen Cord. Elizabeth Walker as Carolyn Russell. And also starring Barbara Rush as Marsha Russell. Continental bus arrives in Peyton Place today, and a young passenger, Vicki Fletcher, suddenly realizes she has found the way out of the intense pressure of a life that has cornered her and hurt her. Her way out is the small town itself, and a specific human being, the son of a prominent local doctor, Lou Miles. At this moment, Vicki Fletcher knows she has made the right decision. This town and Lou Miles are right for her. Can I help you, miss? Lou Miles around. Not right now. What do you expect him? He doesn't come in and do his thing until after class. You just come in on the bus from New York? Thanks, Charlie. Thank you, Ed. See you around. If you'd like to leave your name and where you can be reached, I'll see that Lou gets your message. Oh, wait. You may have to wait quite a while. He sometimes goes over to the lab after class. You see, we got a pretty loose arrangement. I said I'd wait a minute. Okay. <laughs> Susan, I'm sorry. I was thinking of something else. Oh, yes. Let me have a swallow of that. It's cold outside. Terrific morning. I can see that. On my way up to make a few phone calls. Can't they wait? You ever tried coffee without booze in it? Don't believe I have. Try it sometime. Yes, sir, I will. How well do you know Rodney? I've talked to him. About what? Well, I remember. Remember? Yes, Counselor. We talked about drinking. My drinking. Well, then you've talked intimately. No, we were in the hospital at the same time together. I was all boiled out, and I... You really like my concoction, don't you? I want you to talk to him again. Rodney. Mm-hmm. About what? Anything that pops into your head, at first. And then? I want you to tell him that his wife has been seeing me. It's a silly, pointless game you're playing, Stephen, and I don't want to play. Fair enough, love. Really? All right, let's forget it. Stephen, how far do you want to go? Look, if you don't want to do this for me, fine. Don't do it. No problems. Stephen, you're beginning to behave just like your grandfather. A little whisper to this ear, a lie to that one. It's all very Peyton-like. Susan, dear, go home. Stephen, I'd do anything for you that made sense. But what's the point? The point is, I'd like it done. All right. All right what? What do you want me to do? Just find some way of letting him know that his wife has been seeing me and seeing me and seeing me about selling this house. And that you as a woman are fed up. Because I want you all to myself. Well, if you don't feel that way, then why don't you fake it? But we understood each other. And we had a mature relationship. That the idea was that in some way we would be useful to each other. Remember? I remember. I've got a few calls to make. Why don't you fix us some more of your specialty, huh? You're pretty confident, aren't you? Mm-hmm. You see, I don't think you have any place else to turn. Anyone else to turn to? Same here. We need each other. <laughs> Very 
good, Rod. Thank you, ladies. Thank you. Next week, the high wire. <laughs> well, just be sure you don't fall off. Right. Attention, please. All nurses' aides report to the lecture room in five minutes. Attention, please. Nice All nurses' aides report to the lecture room in five minutes. Rod? Hey, you're doing marvelously. Thank you. I wanted to ask you a favor. What? Would you please keep Betty away from Stephen? Oh, I'm sure her visits are purely business, but I prefer to monopolize his evenings myself. You know, you've got a very determined young wife, but she's got to learn that uh, your grandfather's money can't buy her everything, and no matter how much she offers, the house isn't for sale. The house? Well, the Peyton house. I'm sorry. I, I thought you knew. I assumed... I, I didn't think she would go behind your back. She didn't. Well, usually when a decision like this, a, a wife would consult her husband. You can stop assuming, Mrs. Winter. She had my full permission. You see, we discuss every decision together. We trust each other. Well, that's good. You have a perfect marriage. Yes, we do. Now, if you'll excuse me. Rod, please, I, I'm sorry. I, I guess we just, Stephen and I, are, are a loser's club, but it's better than having no one. Why are you telling me all this? What do you want? Because I want Stephen, and I want him for myself. I'm jealous of your wife. Now, all she wants is a house. That's great. But it's an excuse for Stephen to see her. And I tell you something, he wants that excuse. That's not news. That's his problem. Well, then I don't understand. I mean, what's wrong with you? Keep your wife at home. Get out of here. I'm all right. That's good. Young man. Brakes are slipping. Oh, well, ma'am, the thing is... Oh, I can leave it. Can't use it till spring. Streets are too slick. Oh. You're the impatient young man I met in the general store. Uh, well, what you don't know is, is I was just putting her on. The girl in the store. I know. No, is what you don't know is that she's my wife, Rita. Oh. Fooled me. Thought you were a masher. <laughs> a masher? <laughs> I'm glad that you find me amusing. Well, ma'am, I just never thought of myself as a masher. How much will you charge me to fix my brakes, and how long will it take? How much and how long? Uh, as well as what I'm trying to tell you is I don't repair bicycles. I repair motorcycles. The bicycle repair shop is down there by Bill's Barbershop. Yes. And for some reason or other, that man's got a sign in his window that says he's closed for the winter, of all the nonsense. Well, not too many people ride bicycles on the street, you know, with, the, with everything being slick and all. By the way, I didn't get your name. My name's Norman Harrington. Riggs. I'm glad to meet you, Mrs. Riggs. Likewise. Look, because what you need on this thing is uh, handbrakes, both front and back. Do you know how to repair the brakes? Repair them, not replace them. Well, sure, but... Uh... This is your shop, is it? Yes, ma'am. Mine and my brother's. Look, uh, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll let you use my bike. It's laying around here somewhere. I told you. I can't use it till the spring. The streets are... Yeah, the streets are slick. Yes. Well, I want my bike fixed, and I want it fixed now. You've probably got all the clothes that you need already, so a hand-knitted muffler would be of no interest to you. Sure. And anyway, by the time I get it knitted these days with my hands the way they are, well, <laughs> the winter would be over and done with. What would you say? to a homemade blueberry pie, young man. Why, oh, I'd like that a lot. You fix my brakes, and I'll give you two? No, three'd be more like it. Three blueberry pies. Look, Mrs. Riggs, what I'm trying to... Three blueberry pies would be fine. Same as money, you know. And if you don't like the taste of the first one, you could always sell the other two and probably make a profit. They'll keep in the freezer. Sure. Good. Oh. Bartering and trading is an ancient and honorable tradition, young man. I know, I know. Uh, hi, Norman. Oh, uh, hi, Rita. Norman, what's the matter? I don't think it's a very nice thing to tease an old lady. What? Pretending that you didn't know this young man and getting me all concerned about what he might do to you after I left the store and all the time you two were husband and wife. I'd expect it of him. He's full of devilment. You can tell that just by looking at him. 
I'd never expect a person like you to tease an old lady. I'm sorry. Really, I am. Good. It's a deal, then. I'll make you three lo... medium-sized blueberry pies in return for you fixing my brakes by tomorrow morning, which is when I want my bike back. And I want my bike back tomorrow morning, because that's when I want it. Good day, Mr. Harrington. Good day. Wow. What about that? You missed the best part. <laughs> Tell me about it. You take for hours. You're quite a gal. She sure told me off. Her name's Riggs. Riggs. She lives alone, you know. Old Widow Riggs. Yeah, she's too much for me. You know, old Mr. Benton at the inn should get to know her. How about that old guy that used to uh, take care of the animals? Uh, the vegetarian. Oh. Weatherby? No, he was a mortician. Oh. Hope. That was his name. Yeah. Homer Hope. I bet he'd love to meet her. <laughs> Let's see. There's a... How about old sly bachelor Eli Carson? Can you imagine the two of them together? Yep. Why should they be free and independent when the rest of us are in bondage? <laughs> well, have your fun while you can, Mrs. Riggs. You're gonna get married. 